Right, we're on. Today we're going to talk about golf manufacturers and how they, or how we perceive golf clubs are supposed to be used, and we're going to talk about the real facts about golf clubs and how we can. Well, well, we're really just going to talk about how how we lay a golf club down, how it's supposed to be shaft straight up and down, ball in the middle of the golf club club face. Is that actually right? The manufacturers mislead us slightly by that's how we're supposed to do it. Let's get fired into it. As I say, it's been a busy day. Uh, before we start talking about equipment technology, I'd just like to thank Steve Carr for coming up today. He drove two and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes from Yorkshire to come up for a Eureka lesson today. Brilliant. Very well done. Thank you very much. Right, equipment technology. Equipment technology, eh? What does it all mean? Equipment technology is one of the subjects that you... Um, study when you do your PJ degree down at the Belfry and um, you do a three or four year degree young Jamie's down there just now doing his third year and he's been getting taught about how the golf club works and it's really interesting stuff we all know there's a custom fitting process where we measure lie angle, loft, shaft, flex uh, grip size you name it it's all it's all in there that's equipment technology that's what Jamie will be learning this week or supposed to be learning Where he's not at the nightclub, it's on the resort. Well, you've got to learn, eh? you've got to grow up and do that thing. We've all been there. Ian Pooler had a good night in that nightclub. So I'm about to address this golf ball. I'm going to put my club exactly, my club face. The face of my golf club and the golf ball in the middle of that face. That would make sense. There it is, right behind. Excellent. Take my setup. I've got my setup with my shaft straight up and down. So the club's sitting in its neutral position. What manufacturers would class as neutral or as we're supposed to look at, we've got the club straight up and down, we've got the ball in the middle of the club face, what can go wrong? Well there's a couple of things that could go wrong, but I'll hit one anyway. So that, look, that looks good there, yep, shaft straight up and down, excellent, play my shot, that's how we're supposed to do it. And that's right, absolutely, you look at your, do you remember clubs back in the day? Back in the day your club face had little dimples on the middle of the face, somewhere to identify the fact that that's where the golf ball is supposed to line up with. Especially on the irons they had that, your driver's got it on the top, but certainly the, the irons used to have little dimply things on the face or some form of marking to say, please line the ball up with that bit, that's the middle, that's the sweet spot. No really. If I was to take a plumb bob and go straight down the middle of this, from the middle of my grip, or the front of my grip, if I hold the club straight towards you, down the front of the grip, and let the plumb bob drop down, then this, the sweet spot that rotates around the club shaft should be in the middle of that club face. So I've got the string coming right from the front of the grip, right down the shaft, and letting it hang naturally there. Now you can see when that hangs that that white line is not in the middle of the club face, it's more towards the heel. It falls into the middle of the face at the bottom, but then as you go back up, where we're going to hit the golf ball, two or three grooves up, it's actually more towards the heel. So my sweet spot is actually here. My sweet spot's near the heel and not so much towards the middle. So it's in line with the middle there. But the sweet spot would actually be around about here. So there's the sweet spot now of this club that I have in hand. You can see the sweet spot of this eight iron is closer to the heel. So the middle of the club, the centre of, of gravity around this the longitudinal centre of gravity around the shaft is actually closer to the heel than it is the middle of the golf club. But manufacturers put little dimples on there to say this is where you're supposed to hit the ball from, the middle of the club, which I totally understand. Because they wouldn't put them on the heel because we would perceive that it's been put in the wrong place. But that's just proved it's not. So after all the awkwardness of the string, I now need to put the golf ball closer to the heel of my golf club because the longitudinal, longitudinal centre of gravity swinging around there is near the, ho the hosel. The Cleveland RTX 3.0 wedge, what they did was they reduced the length of the hosel 
okay, to put more weight further forward in here. So therefore they're trying to push this sweet spot more towards the middle of the golf club and away from the heel by taking weight out of here. A lot of clubs have got, hold on. I thought I'd want to show you, but I don't. A lot of clubs have got a tungsten weight towards the toe. Again, that's taking weight away from the heel to try and get that sweet spot more towards the middle. So it plays out the middle rather than playing more towards the heel. So our manufacturers now trying to cover up the fact that they know the sweet spot's more towards the heel, reduce the hosel, the weight in the hosel, which will therefore push the sweet spot closer towards the middle, or nearer the toe, if you like, or put weight in the toe to balance out that extra weight that's in the hosel. Well, trying to put my golf club, my golf ball, sorry, just nearer the heel when I play my shots, which now looks as I'm going to shank. No chance of that. So that's how we find the sweet spot. Next thing. So we know where the sweet spot is. Now, AJ Bonner mentioned this. AJ Bonner says that every golf club has got eight degrees of too much loft on it. Okay? So every golf club, therefore, what he's saying is every club, as you see it, has eight degrees too much loft. Okay? So therefore there's eight degrees bounce, eight degrees bounce in each golf club. And if I hold that shaft straight up and down, you can see there is bounce. If I lean the shaft forward and put it onto its leading edge, that's moved by arguably eight degrees, and that's the impact position. So why don't I start in that position and the ball near the heel? So I'm starting more Bryson DeChambeau, for example, start more with a hands forward, forward shaft leaning on the leading edge, which is where he wants to return to impact, and also playing out of the heel. If I can do both those things, then I'm going to get the most out of the golf club. It's going to perform the best for me towards the heel and hands forward. So I'm there, so I'm more impact position and I'm more in the heel. As I come from the inside, I'm going to catch more of the heel. And then good golf shots. Okay, so now we're trying to paint this picture. But then I have to get into a position that it's at a dress I can put myself there. So please shot, plea? <laughs> So pre-shot routine becomes really important. I have to find a way for myself to present this golf club to the golf ball before I take the club back. So I'm going to get sweet spot strike and the forward shaft lean. Here's how we're going to do that. Dead simple. Club and line the target. Okay, with the ball in the middle of the club face, not on the sweet spot that we already know. So not towards the heel, but in the middle of the golf club. The suggested sweet spot. Like that. Ball in the middle. Club, face, towards target, leading edge 90 degrees towards target. Take my address position, there. Now I've got my right hand on the golf club, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the sweet spot around the back of the golf ball just slightly, just a fraction, just enough to get that club, probably about 8 degrees I imagine, just enough to get that shaft leaning forward and the handle of the golf club, so straight up and down, the handle of the golf club to head towards left thigh, so it's heading towards my left thigh up here. Then I can take the grip. So now it's sitting on its leading edge. Now I've presented the heel of the golf ball, to, the heel of the golf club, or as we know the sweet spot towards the golf ball, which leaves the face slightly open. The face slightly open is no big deal because at the point of impact it's going to be slightly open, but the point of separation as the club comes around the corner, if you like, it's going to be square to target because we're catching sweet spot now. We're gathering the golf ball from this section, turn it around the hitting golf ball. So manufacturers didn't tell us this because it wouldn't look right. I mean, looking down at a golf club with the sweet spot closely towards the heel. And then if they'd set the club up with the handle further forward on the head, I mean, nobody would sit it down and be comfortable. There, there, sweet spot rotating around the back of the golf ball, take my grip. That's me now perfectly ready to play the shot, returning back to that position of impact. Nice. Again, club to target. Take my stance, sweet spot rotation, grip it. Then from there, return back to that position of impact. Guys, give that a try. So the sweet spot is near the heel. Okay, so get your golf ball right in the middle. Hold on. Get your golf ball right in the middle, and then rotate the sweet spot around so we're presenting the heel or the actual sweet spot towards the golf ball and therefore we're putting the handle a little bit higher 
and we're sitting on the leading edge. So now we've got the golf club set up exactly how it needs to be at impact, so we can re-deliver it or return it back to that. We've got an impact fixed position, club back, bang, back to that position at impact, using the middle of the golf club and the shaft in the manner it's supposed to be used. Manufacturers won't tell you that, as I mentioned. Who on earth, which company in their right mind, is going to put a dot where that purple dot is and say that's where you're supposed to hit the golf ball? Nil. Guys, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'm up to 12,000 subscribers now, which is brilliant. Thank you very much. Also, hit the little bell notification so you get an instant notification of all my videos. And thumbs up button. Thank you.